All right, guys, thank you for uh, listening to Flipcast. I got a really special guest. I got Zach Birchy. Am I saying that last name correctly? Yeah, Birchy. Yeah. I uh, I have a trouble. I have trouble with names like all yeah. the time. And uh, your name is, uh, it's it it looks like it's pronounced differently. But most people say Bertsky. That's uh, what I was thinking. And then I, you know, and I've been listening to the Ancast for a while, so I should know this. Yeah, but no, it's a, I don't blame anyone. It's a tough name. I've been having to spell it phonetically for people my entire <laughs> life. So. so you are the host of Ancast, and you are also you work at Anime News Network. Uh, yes, I'm the executive editor at Anime News Network. And, ex- uh, and exactly what does that mean? Executive. So uh, executive editor means um, I handle all of editorial and our convention. So basically, uh, any review, any review. So a daily streaming review, uh, a regular full size review, a special review from a convention. I'm the person who handles that. Um, I handle all of our interviews and our feature material. Um, I frequently write now, right now we're producing YouTube content. You can check out the list on our, on our YouTube channel. Um, that's new. Uh, and I handle all of our convention coverage, uh, even the news side of it. So I have to schedule all that and edit it and, and put it up on the site. I also handle all of our graphic design and our, a lot, a lot of our advertising stuff. Um, I, I do a lot. <laughs> that sounds like you got your hands full. And yeah. we've, we've been trying to do this podcast for three weeks now. Yeah. And, uh, you, like just, you know, I, I got a wisdom tooth pulled and almost went septic because of it. And oh then, God. Yeah. It was pretty bad. And then, uh, you lost internet last week. And, yeah. uh, so finally we're, I'm finally talking to you. I'm so pumped. Uh, so I, so right away, Ancast is back. You said eight weeks off air. You guys have been doing it straight. Yeah, we've been we so it, we had to go dark for a couple of months there while I sort of got my my stuff together. Um, but um, my new co-host Lindsay uh, is super game, uh, likes to likes to do jokes with me and stuff, and and we've been on for the last eight weeks, and we we intend on not missing another week. Uh, and, we want to do it. We want to make sure. And you two can. have really good chemistry. Like, oh, thank you, you and Lindsay. And and there's something I want to ask you. Do you have a background in like theater? Because your guys' skits at the very beginning, the last handful of episodes have been hilarious and awesome. Oh, thank you. That's really, <laughs> I'm chuffed to hear that. Uh, yes, I do. I do. Um, I was, I was in drama in high school. I had a sketch comedy group in college and, um, I, I've always wanted to do that kind of silly stuff. Like I like jokes. I like fun and, yeah. uh, I like to perform and I like to work my voice out and stuff. So, yeah, like it's it's a good time. I'm, I've got some really stupid, very elaborate jokes coming up. <laughs> I can't wait. Um, so the so the thing I like about the Ancast is that I I love anime and I love manga and I love all that stuff. But you guys also cover movies. Yeah, and you're you have some really strong opinions on some movies. Yeah, and your latest opinion on Joker. Yeah, was that you said I believe you. You said your your eyes rolled so hard in the back of your head they almost shot out your skull. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I did indeed. So uh, as so as someone that values your taste in movies, because every time you like something, I usually like like every every time you start gushing about a certain thing, I'm like, holy crap! I love like you're a huge Eva fan. I'm a huge Eva fan. Yeah. Uh, you guys were gushing about Gladiator. Gladiator is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's so great. it's fantastic. And that song Elysium at the end, I mean, spoilers uh, for gladiator, but that soundtrack, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's cause yeah. like, but that song Elysium at the end of that movie, when he dies and he sees his wife and uh, son again, that if I hear that anywhere, I will tear up. That is one of my favorite songs in the history are you of music. About, are you talking about Elysium? Or are you talking about now we are free? Now we are free. That's sorry. I yeah. think I think on the soundtrack those two are like right next to each other. They are, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. so I I always get those two mixed up. But now we are free is such a good, such it's a on good my, fucking song. Yeah, it's on my workout. Uh, That's on your workout playlist. <laughs> yeah. I'll run to that thing. <laughs> oh man, I could not run to that. I would be sobbing. <laughs> so I love that song. so. Every time that I hear you talk about something and I, you know, and I value what you say. And then you said Joker was terrible. And as someone who hasn't seen it yet, I was like, damn it. So, yeah, is, is it really? Because, like, I like edgy stuff. Like, I, I, I think Gantz is a work of art. Sure. Uh, so I, I, I do like edgy stuff, but is it that bad? I like, I like edgy stuff. Um, you know, plenty of edgy stuff. I mean, you could call Evangelion, you know, pretty edgy. Uh, <laughs> This felt like I think the comment I had was that this feels like it was written by an eight chan poster who's just <laughs> about 
shoot up a mall. Like that's what it feels like because it's a, it justifies this is a murderer, a, a, a mentally ill murderer who uh, starts a, basically starts spree killing, uh, which then it, like every murder he does is justified extensively in the film. Like, oh, well, he was hurt. So or they were bad people um, like and it has a really sick attitude towards society like, oh, everyone's a, everyone's scum and no one understands me and all they do is hurt me. So this is justified, basically. And he launches, you know, spoilers. Um, he launches uh, basically a political revolution in the city and people in Joker masks rally around him and save him from being arrested uh, after murdering somebody on air uh, in, in front of the cameras. Which is Robert and De Niro's character, right? It, Robert De Niro's character. And it's very graphic. Like, I was pretty upset by how graphic it was. Like, now I'm not easily upset by violence, but this was already pissing me off. Like, <laughs> I don't need to see, like, the incel manifesto, the movie. Like, if you're aware of the political... Like, if you just divorce it completely from you know, the political environment that we live in and the fact that America has a gigantic issue with we mass a huge, shooting. We have a massive issue. And that's actually, as a parent, uh, my wife and I are actually talking about homeschooling our child because of that exact because reason. Because of that kind of thing? Because yeah. of that thing, because well, it's scary. Who could blame you? Like, it's such a huge problem. And this movie felt, like, super irresponsible. And, like, I, I don't, like, so my, my degree is in film theory. I, I, got, I went to film school and my degree is in film theory. And so I, I tend to think about stuff. I try to think about stuff with the full context of what's surrounding it and the environment that we live in. And, you know, Todd Phillips, the director who directed the sort of increasingly mean and angry hangover see, movie. That, and, see, now that's something I want to talk about because you said that on the podcast. And even as I, I, I don't I don't think of myself as douchey, but when I was younger, definitely like a douchier person. I never thought I never. I mean, I mean, you. I, I, I think you should be able to call yourself out. You know what I mean? Oh, and, sure. Well, yeah, well, and also, I was miserable. I was 340 pounds, and I hated life, so I was just a douchebag to everybody. But Oh, geez. Yeah, uh, no, well, relatable. <laughs> yeah, you also lost a lot of weight, too. Yeah, I lost 150 pounds. Yeah. Holy shit. You look incredible, by the way. And your hair is the oh, best oh. hair in podcasting. Oh, thank you. Thank am, you very much. <laughs> I, am, I am balding right now at the age of 27. I'm almost 28. And oh, uh, it is, uh, it's pretty scary. Gary, it's really upsetting, but anyways, you can handle it, just handle it gracefully. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, what, I'm, head. I'm just gonna shave my head. I'm just gonna sure. shave the head, keep the, keep the beard. But you said something about the Hangovers having a like a sense of like dread to them. Yeah, and I was like, oh my god, I completely understand that because when I watched those movies, I only found out of the three movies, there's only one scene that made me laugh, even when I was younger, and it's that scene oh. where that baby's crying. He's like, shut that baby up. That's right. the that's the only scene that made me laugh. I think those movies are like strangely dark. Yeah, for, well, that's for... Todd, that's Todd Phillips. Like he's he's an I don't know what he has to be angry about. Like <laughs> maybe he got a divorce or something, but he's an angry guy. And like those movies, like they stop. Like the the second and third ones are almost like not comedies. No. Like they're they're just like like weirdly dark kind of action movies with a couple of jokes. Uh, that usually at the expense of the marginalized, um, yeah, which sucks, which totally sucks. Um, and Joker, uh, also has big problems with the, its treatment of marginalized people and women and, uh, black people, especially. Um, and that really pissed me off. <laughs> like, I know what you're doing, Todd. You can't get this shit past me. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, and then like you'll hear people say like, oh, SJWs. Yeah, but, don't like that. and I I I don't like that phrase because no, is being not. is being in, is being considerate towards other groups of people wrong? Like that's basically like no. what that like no, not at all. So and that's when people are like, "Oh, just be quit being sensitive." And it's just so weird cuz on Twitter, like people that aren't like I would say violent people are just fucking gushing about this movie. Just yeah. going crazy about it. I'm well, like, it, "Well, not everyone thinks about movies in the same way." And I can understand if you just if you if you're just there for escapism and you just divorce it completely from the world around you and like like the the situation that we're currently in in this country, I can see how maybe and you're just like oh it's just a it's just a comic book origin story like 
okay, so you just don't think very much about what you're watching. Just and, read just read the Killing Joke if you want an actual Joker origin story, or you know, there's comics for that. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, frankly, I I dramatically prefer the depiction in The Dark Knight um, by the yeah. you know the incredible Heath Ledger, where it's he's just a hurricane of chaos and is he has no background because it changes every time he tells anyone you know and, what, and what's happening and that's what that's what joker's supposed to represent he's supposed to represent like a constant anti-batman he's supposed to be like the antithesis to what batman represents yeah right and you know frankly the i like batman when it's goofy like my favorite is 1966 like <laughs> Either Romero, like, you know, like taking it seriously. Like I, I posted a quote by Alan Moore who said he regrets the killing joke because it launched this whole dark, gritty take on superheroes. And now people can't get past that. I and, liked, I like some of the dark, gritty take, but I think you're right. It, there's two. It's like, this is why I read mostly manga too, is because all yeah. superhero comics feel so one note. They feel all exactly the same. And I actually sold my entire uh, omnibus like all my marvel and dc stuff i kept a handful of like any comics like paper girls uh sure but that's why i have like 2500 volumes of manga and not <laughs> wow. and not and not comics yeah i have a lot of manga i i read a lot of manga and it's because you can have the super serious uh overly edgy stuff like gantz but then you can have stuff like yona of the dawn or yotsuba and just have these heartwarming like stories as well and in superhero comics it's just like Batman is dark. Uh, Wonder Woman is dark, and Superman. Like I don't think there's any good Superman stories, but like I, I think it's I think it's really hard to write for that character. I kind of liked. I mean, I like All Star Superman. I thought that one was pretty good. Revisiting re it, revisiting it, I was kind of like, well, anyway, <laughs> it's okay, I guess. So, um, what's your favorite comic story of all time? Um, like superhero uh, or not, just like. Oh, uh, Nausicaa, The Valley of the Wind. Uh, yep. Definitely my favorite manga ever. But um, also Devilman. Um, Devilman, yep. And right now I'm reading a series that is just shaking me up called uh, Our Dreams at Dusk, uh, which is being published by Seven Seas. And um, that is a story about a gay kid who gets bullied for it and uh, runs off into the woods one day after being bullied and meets a uh, meets a lesbian couple the first like like loving gay couple that he's ever encountered and it shatters him because he's like this is what love could be for me and it is a beautiful story like and that's, really and that's put up by seven seas seven seas the three there's only four volumes long there's three of them out now i'm really excited about the fourth one coming out pretty soon um also very much enjoying the re-release of yurisi atsura uh, which Viz is putting out. Yep. And the, uh, are they two in ones or three in ones? The there's well, I actually don't know how many, thick. but they're thick. They're big, thick omnibus volumes. So I think it might that, that that's a long series. So I don't actually series. know how many volumes are planned. I actually but... own all the anime on bootlegs. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Uh, that's a lot. That's hundreds of episodes. <laughs> it's uh, let me see. It's it's three box sets, and I think each box set has like six Blu-ray discs in it. Yeah, it's a it's, no, a, it's a crazy amount. And that's the thing. Like, I'm pretty much I'm anti bootleg. But if I can't get it officially yeah, in English, yeah. I'm going to like all of Macross is on bootleg. And I was like, I can't pass that up. Yeah, because Macross yeah. is phenomenal. I bought um I bought the Macross seven Blu-rays when I was in Japan. They had them used at a book off. And I was like, well, I can't pass this up. So <laughs> I feel really bad for people who are fans of Jap like who are Japanese people who are fans of anime because their Blu-rays are like expensive and you get like yeah. very like I'm a huge fan of Tokusatsu. Sure. And uh, I was like, I felt bad because I have like every common writer season bootlegged. So I was like, I'm going to buy the I'm going to buy some of the newer ones. And they're like 250 bucks for like a set. That's true, but if you like, if you're in Japan, which is of course a luxury, um, typically that stuff will show up used for like half price a couple of days after it comes out. I I don't know exactly why people would buy it and then just immediately sell it, but I saw stuff that had come out the previous week sitting in book off uh, for about half the price used. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, 
like i would i wish there were i think there are courier services that'll take care of that for you but the shipping will kill your discount i think so yeah like it, it is expensive but there are kind of ways around that uh so this is a very I, this is a very stupid question i ask every guest this i asked uh justin Savaka this robert robert moorhead this uh how did you get in the anime and I uh, and and I like asking not to say that you're old, but I like asking people that are older than me, because it oh, feels <laughs> you're not that old. You're probably like what, like in your thirties? I'm thirty nine. You're yeah. not old, dude. That is, that is... <laughs> in this industry, I'm old. <laughs> but like, but like, I always like. like I don't mind. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I think Justin's thirty nine too, right? Uh, yeah, we're about the same age. Yeah, but I like asking people that are older than me because. Finding anime at like a, like in your guys' generation always sounds so like cool. Like you guys had to like go through like these cool ways to watch it. Uh, Robert said that he would go to like theaters and there'd be a person live translating it. Yeah. Like, at at yeah. the you know, and I just think that's like for my generations, it's mostly uh, I saw Dragon Ball Z on Cartoon Network. Yeah. Uh, but even though mine's like my parents own a restaurant, so the yeah. way I got into anime was employees handed me like VHS tapes. Sure. And they were like, check this out. And I was like, oh shit, what is this? But so yeah. how so how did you get an anime and what made you fall in love with it? And now you have a you work in this industry now. So um I was always kind of a cartoon guy. Like I just loved animation. Uh in the you know, as a kid, I I suppose I just never thought of it as like being something that's only for children. Um and I, I remained and I remain like a giant fan of like Disney feature animation. And if there's a if there's a new animated movie, I will probably see it depending. You know, I, I don't see everything. But um, <clears throat> back then, um, I remember being in uh, my sophomore uh, history class and the, the guy behind me handed me uh, the return of Lum, like the first this, it was a big, thick omnibus of lum that viz put out you know decades ago and uh he handed me that and i read it and i was like oh what is this um and i was intrigued by it and so uh it turns out it turned out that in my hometown we had a, a little store that specialized in like nerd stuff and they sold a lot of, of anime stuff at the time like you know bootleg soundtracks and vhs and stuff like that and there was a flyer there for my local anime club which uh, I didn't know existed. And they were showing X-1999, the movie, and the second Slayers film back to back. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> so, and they were they, they had bought the laser discs of these and subtitled them themselves. Wow. Uh, yeah. And so I showed up and they were showing Irresponsible Captain Tyler, Kimigori Orange Road, and then, you know, a couple other shows. And then this movie, these movies. And I was like, my mind was just like, wait, cartoons can be this like are you serious i'm like it's not like those are like really great films i mean i love them to this day but that's because you know nostalgia but like uh that was my introduction and then i got deeply involved with that anime club and immediately took to it and showed up every week and like started you know going online and <clears throat> uh you know getting fans of vhs and started trading tapes with people and you know, amassing a library that I could share with people, uh, which is which is kind of how you did it back then. My my anime club was so old school that they um they they uh <laughs> they had an Amiga, which I don't know. <laughs> I know what that yeah, I know what that is. They had an Amiga and their so their copy of the, the first Kimigori Orange Road movie didn't have subtitles. Wow. So they did it live using the Amiga. <laughs> That is insane. That's that's some dedication. Yeah, oh, they were very dedicated. A lot of those guys were kind of dicks, and it was, <laughs> you know, whatever. But <laughs> like it, it, old school otaku are sometimes can be difficult to deal with. But yeah, uh, I enjoyed I enjoyed their company and and learned a lot about anime being around them and just absorbed everything I could. Uh, and then um, then uh anime news network opened in the late 90s and uh i volunteered to start writing for them and uh i have been to in my i, I always like to tell people this in my career which is now about 20 years uh, i have been to one anime convention not for work <laughs> which That's was pretty insane which was anime expo 2000 
which was held at the Disneyland Hotel. And you went uh, and you went just on your own just for fun? No, well, I went with my anime club. We took a bus across. <laughs> we, went with, we took a bus from Arizona to Southern California. Wow. And uh, yeah, it was it was crazy. Someone had a bootleg VHS of Titan AE that we watched on the bus. <laughs> That's a now that's a callback. Yeah, that, that and, is an uh, old movie. It is, it it is uh, coming soon to Disney Plus, I believe. Uh, so good. like Disney Plus looks good. Yeah, now I'm already signed up for it. Gargoyles. Uh, oh man, I'm so funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, they premiered the Utena movie there, uh, and that changed me. That movie changed me. And then it's, ever since to this then, day, one of my all time favorites, and. Uh, I already, I obviously had been in love with anime for about five or six years by that point, but that movie was like, hmm, what? Wh this is a limitless art form. It's limitless. They can do anything. And I just, I just totally fell in love. And like, I've always been a big art guy. Like, I go to a lot of art museums, I follow a lot of artists. It's, it's a huge passion of mine. And so this felt like a calling. And uh, yeah, I've never looked back. And here you are, man. You are just seriously. You're one. Of, you're like when I decided to do this podcast, I made a list of people that I want to get on, and you were at the very top. It was like you and Justin wow. were up there, and then I'm slowly Thanks. working my way through messaging people, trying to get the rest of the people on the list. Like I want to interview like Mike, uh, Mike, uh, Mike Tool, and yeah, uh, definitely. You should definitely have him on. But <laughs> but good friend of mine. But listening to Ancast, uh, and reading your work as well uh you put yourself out there a lot and you put yourself out there especially during the whole vic situation which which we talked about off air so i'm in a facebook group where like it's 400 people uh it's a it, it's a closed group and it's just people talking about manga and anime and um when i said hey i'm gonna this is back when we originally planned on talking i said hey i'm talking to zach and everyone said thank him for covering the whole vic situation oh well and, like, like the, the, I just want to point out the credit for that belongs almost a hundred percent to my co-host on the show, Lindsay. Lindsay Love, who we went through hell covering that. Yeah, uh, you guys did. And like, as someone who, like, I wasn't because I don't pay attention to that. Like, I, I don't follow voice actors like in right, a weird way. Yeah. Like some people seem to do. Uh, yeah. Well, so, me neither. <laughs> but but then I started seeing YouTubers who I like looked up to started covering this and like trying to like rationalize and try to like i like side with vic obviously and i was like oh i need to obviously read up on this before i decide to and personally take a stand on whether or not you know what i mean so sure. when i finally actually read up on it i was like yeah that dude seems really fucking creepy like that seems like a really creepy fucking thing to do uh -huh. and and then just seeing like when i was doing research on you and like trying to like look like try to like find stuff i can like ask you about threads of just people bashing anime news network just constantly yeah. just just shitting on you guys and you guys did nothing wrong you guys are just reporting what was happening that's all you guys were doing yeah um a lot of that comes from uh youtube uh a lot of it comes from youtube yep uh, a lot of people spend their lives just watching hate videos on youtube and there were a couple of grifters, notably his completely incompetent lawyers, who uh, kept, they would do these long, like three or four hour drunken live streams where they're just, you know, relentlessly defending everything he's ever done, calling everyone who calls him out a liar, and then attacking the press, which, as you may know, uh, is an easy way to get hateful people on the internet to give you likes and subscribes by attacking the press. And, and Sounds kind of like what our president did. Hmm. I wonder <laughs> what's next in there. Yeah. Uh, that honestly, that stuff is a badge of honor for me. Uh, if if we weren't doing it right, those people wouldn't hate us. Exactly. But that means we're doing it right. And like, I always, you know, whenever those people kind of pop up, I'm always like, yeah, head on back to the YouTube comments, buddy. Like, go on back to your stupid videos where some idiot screams into the camera and tells you what to think. And you don't use your critical thinking skills, or I think I heard about it from the quartering, which was yeah, or, and, or like yeah. Oh man, that guy! Like I don't want to like. I mean, I don't care, but 
he just gets angry about everything. Yeah. And I'm just like, dude, you are that just exists. It must be exhausting to just have to scour the internet to get upset about a voice actor being inappropriate it, it, towards fans. Like it's because it's because they think it's going to get them likes and subscribes. And I, it, it does. And it does. It's a tactic. Like I really hope those people don't actually think Vic is like a good dude. Like I hope they are just absolutely a hundred percent like likes, subscribes. I yeah, I think it's amoral fame chasing like oh wait i can get this sort of army of gullible morons to show up and click like on my crap uh, <laughs> and and i'll get more subscribers if i if i do it this way like they probably like my my instinct is that like most of them are also just kind of hateful idiots and they do actually believe what they're saying but they amp it up in order to get the audience and it's mostly just about social media fame like that's kind of what it is like people who make those kind of youtube videos that's what they're after like i don't know there's a convention called vidcon like i spent a lot of time around youtubers and it's a lot of sort of obsession over their subscribers and uh their you know their instagram feeds and it's life is social media for these people um and that, that's why i absolutely i just got a twitter because i did not want my life to turn into a social media thing. Like, yeah. I, I well, think it's pretty bad. I don't know. I, I, like I'm a little sour on a, a lot of that stuff because I find like people don't have a lot of people these days don't have interests outside of social media. Like what they do is scroll Twitter and Instagram and watch like they won't watch the movie. They'll watch the 10 minute YouTube video by an angry guy that tells them to hate the movie for some reason. And if you ask them about the movie, they will tell you they'll just sort of parrot what they saw on YouTube. And like, my thing is like go watch it for yourself and experience the art yourself and, and make up your own mind. Like, like I understand YouTube is free. <laughs> I understand that, but like it's, it's almost like there's a whole sort of generation of people that like, that's how they consume things now. And as yeah. someone who's had a lifelong obsession with art and, and like, like it, it's a profound experience to me to stand in front of a painting and, and, you know, like, uh, just, a just a couple months ago, I got to see, um, Rene Magritte's Cécine Pas Un Peep, you know, this is not a pipe, yeah. um, in person at the, uh, the LA County Museum of Art. And that was like profound to me, but I suppose I could go online and watch a 10 minute YouTube video with an impact font thumbnail telling me why it's bullshit, you know, instead. And that's just, just depressing. <laughs> yeah. Depressing. And I think that attitude, fuels a lot of this Vic stuff. Um, and it became kind of a rallying cry for, uh, well, conservatives, basically, uh, who, you know, hate people who care about, like, victims and, like, listen to women and, like, care about their stories and believe them. And, you know, I've been in this industry for 20 years, and those Vic stories, like, frankly, we were negligent, not covering it way before this. Because that, 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 that's right. what happened for a long time. A long time. I've been hearing those stories for as long as I've been in this industry. That's like that. That, that is crazy. Sorry if you hear a baby crying. My daughter, uh, oh, here, buddy. is way past her bedtime. It's nap time. <laughs> she is. Uh, she's a cranky baby. But but my wife's got her. I can just hear. So I, I didn't want to you to be like, uh, what is that? It's, it's just my daughter being being crazy. Congratulations on your baby thank you yeah i mean i mean that's i mean talking about like the joker and the vic stuff having a child going from what i would consider still a kid mentally to being responsible for two people a wife and a daughter has definitely opened up my eyes to the world i guess like how crappy the world is because i was kind of sheltered growing up like my i was the only child my parents owned a restaurant so i grew up in the restaurant with them working um i didn't really have like a I, it's gonna sound bad i didn't really have like a normal childhood you know what i mean i didn't get to go to sleepovers or anything so being sheltered and then like becoming like becoming a father has made me be like more sensitive to violence like you know i used to play call of duty and battlefield all the time but even that's kind of like eh, you know like guns freak me out now as a parent yeah um i accidentally almost shot myself in the head when i was uh, 13 years old Uh-oh. uh yeah so guns are like Guns are really scary, and this whole 
you know, I started doing this YouTube thing to, you know, the circle it back to the Vic situation, but, uh, this whole YouTube thing, I just, I just wanted to cover manga and anime. I didn't want to cover the news. I didn't want to cover, um, like the drama in the industry, but I got comments during the Vic stuff. What's your opinion on the Vic situation? What's your opinion on the Vic situation? And I've always replied, I don't really have one because I didn't want to like, because I didn't at the time, but now I have been on stream before saying, you know, fuck Vic. And, uh, Especially mm-hmm. you when, <laughs> when when the case happened, when it got you know like when the judge <laughs> made his decision, uh, you said a pretty awesome fuck you to everybody who was harassing you guys. I mean, look, we got death threats and stuff. Yeah. Like, oh man, it, it was not easy. I it could, wasn't easy. I could, I could not imagine. Like especially uh, Lindsay, who covered most of it. She's also a, a, a mom, so I'm sure like getting death threats yeah. as a parent is just fucking frightening she got some pretty serious death threats and uh it got real it got real dicey there for a little bit but we we came through it and Lindsay and i won't we're not gonna back down like we got the you know gladiator like (laughs) it's that you put your sandals in the sand and you pull out your your gladius fuck you (laughs) (laughs) i will fight you i just i just like whether or not Vic did it or not, the people are clinging on to a voice actor. Like, and I, and I believe he did. I think, you know, I know, like, he, I, said, he, did. he said he did. In the deposition, it's all in there. He, he admitted to so, most. To so me. he did that shit and people are still like, <laughs> I, I remember what, after listening to Ancast and you guys, cause that's how I get most of my news is from An- An- anime news network. Uh, Cool. And and, yeah, I mean, and uh, I've actually, you know, like you guys have that thing. It's like donate a couple bucks. I've donated a couple bucks before. Uh, well, thank you. Because I, you guys, uh, you and Silicon Era are like the two websites I go to for news. Uh, mm. Like you for anime, and then Silicon Era for like JRPG news. And uh, sure. And when I heard about it, because that's where I got all my news from. Like shortly after, I was on YouTube and I was seeing people live stream breaking down the like transcript of the court case and trying to justify it in Vic's favor. And I was just like, you guys are yeah. reaching for straws now. Well, it's the thing is it's all disingenuous. Like a lot of these people were not, didn't care at all about Vic. Uh, they just found that this is a flashpoint. You know, you remember Gamergate? It's kind of like that. It's yeah. culture war stuff. These guys figured they could turn this into a flashpoint where you can harass uh, progressive journalists out of the business by amassing a little army and you know targeting people like that's kind of the same thing and frankly people have been trying to launch anime gate for years and years and years <laughs> this is the closest they've ever gotten but un- you know fortunately it was managed by total incompetence who completely screwed it up and uh and i'm i'm older and wiser now and i don't feel threatened by these people at all uh but they've been trying this for for quite a while. They just they just found something to latch on to that for whatever reason got people's you know you know Gamergate was a long time ago and culture is even more polarized now, so it's easier to get that kind of little army amassed around some stupid some stupid crap like this. Um, but it like it's not like it's not like the guys perpetuating this were huge fans of Vic Mignogna. Like no, they weren't. Uh, they're latching onto it because the they guy think it's who voiced get... Brawley is just my hero. He's yeah, just... <laughs> right. Sure, they sure he was. Um, <laughs> like Vic was already basically persona non grata. Uh, he stopped getting major roles a long time ago. Um, you know, it, it, it's all pretty disingenuous. And he has like ten lines in that Broly movie. Broly barely yeah, says does. anything. I actually I saw that <laughs> on my birthday last year or this year uh, yeah, yeah. this year and I, I was like, the movie. It's yeah, I, movie. I think it's great but I was just like man for the hyping up Brawly he doesn't really do much he mostly just grunts and screams <sighs> like, but... like you could get anybody to do that it's like like forty five minutes of that movie is just punching <laughs> <laughs> which is which is which is what I want from Dragon Ball sure Honestly, yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I go to Dragon Ball for. Yeah, I I was like, wow, that was like the loudest movie I've ever seen. I saw that I saw I went to the premiere of that at the Chinese theater uh, here in Los Angeles, and uh, it was like the loudest movie. <laughs> I, I think like, oh, 
This is I, unrelenting. <laughs> speaking about anime and movies, let's move on from Vic. But seriously, thank you yeah. from you know, and tell Lindsay too. Thank you as well. Everyone in the Facebook group was saying, tell them thank you for covering the like the whole Vic situation. Oh, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. I just I recently saw fucking Promare, and that was man, that was a fucking awesome movie. Yeah, like Trigger, yeah. man, Trigger, Trigger is always up and down with me. You know what I mean? Like Kill I Kill was great. Uh, Darling the Franks was not great. Yeah, that I wouldn't put that on Trigger. That. Darling and the Franks, like, you know, they did some animation on it, but, like, it was mostly the director on that one. Like, I've interviewed those guys a few times, and I, I hate that show. Uh, <laughs> but it was clear every time I've interviewed it that this is the vision of the director who doesn't work at Trigger. It's A1 Pictures. Okay. So uh, I don't really put that one on Trigger. Um, but, but their work on SSS, S- SSS Gridman. Yeah, that, uh, that would... was my favorite anime when that came out. That like that yeah. like year. I, I like I, I'm a huge Tokusatsu fan, so seeing like them mimic the movement of people in rubber suits in animation, I was like that they fucking nailed it. Like it's so good. Yeah, they totally nailed it. And that that show, um, it's it it's commentative on Tokusatsu as a genre and like subverts a lot of the tropes that are in that in that in that genre. Um. That's an ex- excellently written. Like, I did not expect to be like, wow, this is fantastic. But I've learned to stop underestimating what Trigger is capable of. Especially now with that film. And that movie is just like, I, yeah. oh, man, it, like, like I've, I've seen people be like, eh, it's all right. But for how me, could you say that? yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, man, how could you just be like met just visually? That was just like an orgasm for my eyes. Like, that was just it, beautiful. It's operating at like a 15 the whole time. Like the knob goes to 10, but that movie's at like a 15 the entire time. It never slows down. It never lets up. And it is basically like the entire trigger ethos just distilled into like a two hour film. And the boys kiss at the end. It's wonderful. Like it's so good. I, I did not know uh, who's the blonde male. What's his name? Neat. Like, uh, I, I, I can't, can't think of his name, but I I did not know that was a boy until going into that movie. We, well, which is funny because like, so I saw this before it came out over here, and uh, I would tell people like, "Oh, those you know, those two men, right?" <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> "What?" I was like, "Yep, yeah, that's a boy." <laughs> which is awesome. I mean, I think there should be more LGBTQ representation in anime. Well, it's you know, we're getting a little bit more. I mean, well, uh, okay, I would I would sort of qualify that with like. There should be more LGBTQ representation that isn't aimed at like straight women or straight men, like yeah. something like you know. We just yeah. did a we just did a video on the top five uh, boys love, and our number one was Yuri on Ice. And the reason it's there is because that story gets the love part right. It's very empathetic, cares about its characters, the relationship is realistic, and it's not abusive or fetishized. Um, and LGBT people embraced it. I uh, love I love that show. Yeah. So, like, that's kind of the difference. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe we're getting more stuff like that. But uh, Japan is not, as a country, is not quite at where we're at here in America with, um, you know, yeah. s- societal acceptance. Um, they're still big they're, about they're, – they're, they're, they're still very much about big titties and the anime yeah. and – I don't. I well. I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily say that. It's just societally, it's not quite as accepted. There's a really great documentary called Queer Japan that I highly recommend. Okay. Uh, that explains a lot of this stuff. Um, Isn't that why Part Six of JoJo's might be hard to like? It's the worst selling because it's about a like a female character who's very into her sexuality and very strong. And Japan I did not I, view that. Did I'm like, not. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think I read that somewhere because I really want part seven to be animated and I've read parts of part six and I like it. But from what I understand is that it's the worst selling part over there because of that reason, because the main character is a female who is very comfortable with her sexuality and like is very strong. And Japan was kind of like, eh, we don't like uh, that culturally. Yeah, I mean, I don't know when that came out. Um, like I, I read the joke. I read, jo- I read Jojo's as it comes out here in English. Oh, really? Yeah, I haven't read. Like, I try not to try not to bootleg stuff. Yeah, uh, I, I, man, I try not to either. But like, I own every hardcover of JoJo's. 
Sure. And yeah. I now, have them all pre-ordered. So like, I'm trying, like I want, and I've read them all. So I'm like, I got to support Like if something comes of, if, it, if something is readily available to me, like I have 2,500 volumes of manga. I don't know how to save money. So I just blow everything I make <laughs> <laughs> on stupid shit. <laughs> But, uh, same, <laughs> you know, like, uh, like, what is it? Like right now I'm collecting the Power Rangers action, the lightning collection. And my wife's like, you need to fucking just stop. You need to like anime and manga is your hobby. Just stop. No, you're not getting into action figures. And I was like, oh, but those common writer figures look so good. Yeah. 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 No, uh, I feel you on that one. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I just, I don't know. Like I, I trust the translators, like, cause I know the people who translate, the JoJo's manga, and they know what they're doing. So I'm just going to wait for that. Like, I'll just wait for the official release or watch the show. Like, Golden Wind hasn't even started coming out yet in manga form. Um, but I watched the show and, and really, really enjoyed that one. It's actually my favorite, JoJo's. Uh, uh, so my family is from Sicily. And, oh, really? Uh, yeah, so, like, watching that, like, because we used to go over there every other year. Like, we used to go to Rome, and we used to go to nice. Sicily. And beautiful, beautiful country. And... The way that they like hearing a Japanese man pronounce names of people that I actually have in my family is just so funny. Like I was just rolling over laughing. Like Giorno Giovanni. I was just like I I love that. I think yeah. that's so funny. That that's a really good show. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Like I mean, Stardust Crusaders is great, and you know, part. But it, frankly, it's all really good. It's just that part. Well, I'm a little. I'm a little. Uh, sort of meh on diamond is unbreakable i love the way that show looks but the plot is sort of ooky spooky kind of monster of the week stuff uh, just meh. just wait until part seven steel ball run is that's the one everyone says it's is. so fucking good it's yeah. so good well i mean you like we we've run a couple articles on why jojo's is so unique uh as a shonen jump thing um like why like what exactly is it about this that makes it so special and you know i i think araki is a he's a unique and singular artist i mean his his stuff is in the louvre like yeah yeah you know that, you can't say that about too many manga <laughs> and like the way he draws his characters they're so it's like a really fine line like he combines masculinity and femininity together like perfectly yeah. and i think the characters are like masculine and very feminine as well like 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 just visually and i don't think anyone else does that like i can't think of a, any any other manga that i own that where you can say both the characters are both masculine and feminine and i think it's a very unique line he's got a style that's, that's a good way to put it i i that's a that's that's a, that's a good insight um, like like when you think of like what masculinity is and what femininity is and not like in like the toxic way it's just like what you know like what those represent those characters especially in you know like as he progresses because the part one and two they're very beefcakey yeah you know they're very like north the fist of the north star looking like characters and then as time goes on they get more feminine but they maintain their masculinity somehow it's, yeah it's very weird it's like the real like a rocky sort of blossoms over over time the course of, the course of making that and he doesn't and, age uh, either he looks the same age yeah, he's yeah. He's a unique singular talent. He's uh, the, uh, he is the he's the Keanu Reeves of Japan. Nobody nobody makes anything like he makes. And nope. uh, I'm excited to see the next uh the next couple parts. I, I like I said I really love Golden Wind. I I can imagine it only gets it only gets gayer from there. <laughs> <laughs> so, I want to talk about when you think about anime, classic animes, you know, yep. like Every period, every, you know, like the 90s, you know, the mid 90s, late 90s, early 90s, 80s, they all have classics. And I feel sure. like the last 10 years, there's been, I don't know if it's because we get an abundance of anime, like every season, we just get so fucking much. Yeah, there's, uh, so we do the preview guide. Yeah, you guys, are, and just looking at that gave me a headache. We, it's, it's 35 to 40 new shows every three months or so now. And do you ever cover all of that? Uh, we try, except for the stuff. In, <laughs> except for the stuff that's in Netflix jail. Um, we we try. Uh, we can't always get to every sequel series because that a lot of times the stuff won't get voted in for our daily streaming, and uh, that means we probably don't have anyone on staff who watched the entirety of the first season because they have so much other stuff to watch. So 
we might not get to a, a couple of sequel series. Like I think we we missed um, this season. We missed we never learned season two because nobody covered the first one. And we missed uh, Radiant season two because nobody covered the first one. Uh, so that's the stuff that we missed. But generally, we hit about 35, between 35 and 40 shows. That is insane. Uh, and that's every three months. It, the churn is insane. It is it, insane. Like, like even, like, like, I have such a busy work schedule. I work, like, 80 hours in five days usually. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's – being a self-employed business owner makes me want to blow my heads off. But nope. – uh, but <laughs> Uh, to pass time, I'll watch anime weekly, but I only have time to watch like maybe two shows. Right. And then like, I forget. And then by like the blink of an eye, there's like a whole new season happening. And it's just like, what the fuck? It just keeps happening. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah it's, a, it's an insane churn. I, I have trouble keeping track of it myself. Um, but luckily I have a team of freelancers who watch a ton of stuff and, you know, they'll recommend they'll recommend the good ones and I'll try to keep track of the good ones. But I, I personally probably only watch about three to four shows a season, something like that. So what um, do you it, think would be considered a classic in the last 10 years? From the last 10 years. Oh God, that's a tough one off the top of my head. Um, geez. Like for classic. me personally, I think attack on Titan. Um, I've read, yeah. I've, I've read the manga and where that story is going like where it's going, I think it's almost over. I but I would say in the next year and a half it might, it'll be done. I don't uh, I don't think you could call that a classic though. Like that's still running. <laughs> but well, I, I mean like think... I mean like for like right now, like that's the only show that stands out in my mind as being such a cultural thing. Like it was just massive. People that I knew that didn't even like anime fucking loved Attack on Titan. I think I think that's uh, I think you're right, but I would also add My Hero Academia to that list. Yep. Um, in terms of cla- classics, I, God, I hate to call it that, but I would point to uh, Fate Zero and Madoka Magica. Um, those two. Uh, I've never seen that. Fate actually. I've never seen any Fate. Uh, uh, that's I'd... the only good one. <laughs> is wait? Is it is it the one that Anaplex is putting out that box set on right stuff? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think they're re-releasing it. Because I, I might, I might I buy that. Access. You can actually stream it on Funimation.com. Um, yeah, Fate's because... like one of those holes in my knowledge of anime. I just honestly like... that. So that one's good because it was written by Gan Urobuchi, who uh, is a phenomenal writer. Yes, he is. Uh, and he wrote he wrote Madoka as well. And one of my favorite, my absolute absolute favorite shows of the last ten years, Thunderbolt Fantasy. Which is oh popular. my fucking god, yes. Yeah, he wrote that. Thunderbolt uh, is so, my wife hates me because I love that shit. It, I love puppet shows. My wife hates them. And really? I, oh man, I hate puppets. Oh I, man, I, I do a I, puppet show. <laughs> I I tried to watch. I tried to get her to watch fucking dark uh dark crystal, and she was like, "This is just stupid to me." I'm like, "What is wrong with you?" What? There's, but the, it's beautiful. It's and like, beautiful. Huge art, like. And that's all in camera. They had to make those. That's and so insane. Them. Like I'm a lifelong diehard, super hardcore Jim Henson fan. And so when they said, we're making it, we're going to make 10 hours of the dark crystal, which is at best a cult hit. Yeah. <laughs> and a, a strange movie that most people kind of bounce off because it's weird. It's Jim Henson and Brian Froud's like mega passion project for uh, like grown up, like for whatever reason, I had a VHS of that. Like my yeah. parents bought me that for whatever reason. Uh, and I had that. And when they announced that they were doing that, I was like, huh. Really? I was like, yeah. what? Okay. <laughs> like, I'll guess I'll watch that. That's cool. And I, you know, I've been watching it. I've been taking that one slow because you're not going to probably not going to get more of it. And it's like, this is like once in a lifetime. You don't think that they're going to do season two? I, I mean, I don't know. It depends on the view numbers, but that was fantastically expensive to make and very time consuming. I, uh, I really hope we get like a physical media version of that. Yeah, I would love to buy a 4K version of that one. That, 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 that would be... I, would, I would be right on board. Same with uh, Thunderbolt. Yeah, of course. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, the, like they would show... Do that. that be, it's. I mean, they could sell a few thousand units. I think. Like, just do a limited print run. Maybe, maybe like Discotech will, will try to pick. That I hope one. so. Disco, but, dude, Discotech's my favorite company when it comes to publishing anime. They do great work. They do amazing. Justin is Justin is one of the nicest people I've ever talked to. 
like in right. any format. Like like we talk on Twitter a lot now, mm-hmm. and uh, he is just such a good guy, mm-hmm. just so fucking nice. Yep, and he does amazing work. Yeah, he's um he's uh he's very he works very hard and he does a wonderful job on the discs. And I would also credit uh, Brady Hartle who does all their uh he does all their graphic design. So yep. all those covers and, and inserts and everything, all that special stuff they do, that's all that's all Brady Mike Mike Tool works on that stuff too. Like they have a real great team over there. They really know what they're doing. And, and it's I, just like they, I am they just keep I am putting admi- out stuff. I, I I am always in admiration of the stuff that they put together. It seems like this year particularly for them. Uh, I mean, my, my the I don't want to say fans, but the people who watch my content on YouTube sure. are probably sick of me listen, just talking about discotech because yeah. like I literally gush about them any chance I get. <laughs> and it's just this year, like every month, there's been three Blu-rays that have just been great. Yeah, and especially this coming up, we got a uh, message from space and Voltus Five, and then you got um, Giant Robo and Galaxy yeah. Express. It's just like they're just knocking it out of the park. Yeah, Giant Robo is a big one. That uh, I'm so it was, so was an impressive rescue that they did on that one. So I'm excited to get that. But anyways, let's 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 go back to talking about you. We keep going on tangents, but that's what I like about that's what I've that, that's what I've enjoyed about talking about you so far is that it feels just natural. I don't feel like I have to like force yeah. anything. It's a great flowing, free flowing conversation. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't give a shit. <laughs> So Whatever Jen's you want got, to talk about, man. <laughs> uh, Jen's coming out with a YouTube show, right? Uh, what's that? Jim, uh, the guy that we were just talking about, he's got a YouTube show coming out, like a YouTube original. Oh, uh, Jim, who the, are we talking? The about? director of uh, Fate. Oh, Gen, 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 Gen yeah, Gen. Uh, yes, he has a new he has a new show coming out on YouTube. Very excited to see that. He has generally not made anything that was uninteresting. His characters speak in. Like they, they, it's broad, but like they're always sort of stand-ins for um, ideological stances, and he does a like a really excellent job, especially in Thunderbolt, of like weaving these things together. Fate Zero is kind of the same way. Um, Did he, he really, do a common writer he, show? What's that? Didn't he? Did, he did, did do a common writer show. Um, I actually, which one? I actually haven't seen that. Um, I, it's on my list of things to see. Uh, but uh, he ge- that's generally how he writes is there's going to be a, a very, very brilliantly articulated ideological stance that he, you know, he might not agree with, but he's dug himself inside of this in order to articulate it to you in a way. And then usually the bad ones get their asses kicked, like in <laughs> Thunderbolt Fantasy, where my boys Shang and Lin basically just go around kicking ass and like taking down fascists like that's basically what they're doing uh and that's sort of gen's stance and he writes a lot of stuff that way so anytime he's got a new project i am first in line like i I think it might have been you that i heard about thunderbolt from like Uh, well i wouldn't be surprised did you guys i i don't know if it was on twitter or what but like i remember shortly after that came out i someone i'm thinking it was you talked about it very highly and i was like a puppet show Done by the guy who uh, did Fate. I was like, even though I haven't seen Fate, I was like, uh, I guess I'll check that out. Yeah, and then it's so badass. Like, especially if you liked the Dark Crystal as a kid, this is this is Peely. It's a it's Taiwanese kind of. Uh, they have a show on Netflix now. They do. Yeah, they do. Uh, that that one's not. It's no Thunderbolt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've only seen the first episode, and I was like, I'll watch this later. I just haven't gotten back to it yeah mm-hmm. but hey zach uh i sorry but i do have to wrap this up uh, sure thing. we are going to we're taking my daughter to her first pumpkin patch oh congratulations there's nothing there's not much else to do in the midwest so yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna go to the pumpkin patch and then uh my cousins are here as well i got my two i got my five-year-old my six-year-old and my four-year-old cousin that were babysitting as well so all right but dude thank you so much for your time yeah, of course. Uh, this has was, been was, this was, was a good. this was a lot of fun, and uh, just tell people where they can follow you, and I'll leave the links down below. Oh, sure. Um, uh, you can find me on www.animenewsnetwork.com, and my Twitter is actionzaku, and that's Z A C K U. Uh, you know, like the Gundam. So <laughs> that's that's it. Awesome. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys next time.